So notice something about this expression. This expression has just the values of the components that we're using in our circuit. It has the EMF of the battery. It has the resistance, the capacitance of our resistor and capacitor. And notice the exponential. What this says is that as time progresses, if we were to actually plot this, so let's have on the horizontal axis time, let's have on the vertical axis, the charge on our capacitor plate. At t equals zero, let's look at it. At t equals zero, notice that we would have a total charge equal to zero because e to the zero is equal to one. So one minus e to the zero is equal to one minus one is equal to zero. So at time t equals zero, zero charge on the capacitor. But notice as time progresses, the capacitor begins to charge. What I'll indicate here is this asymptotic line. This horizontal asymptotic line represents the maximum charge on the capacitor plates. And that maximum charge on the capacitor plate is just equal to the product of the EMF and the capacitance. So that's this coefficient right here. This coefficient represents the maximum charge that the capacitor is going to have um, with given that EMF. And if we were to graph it, that graph would look something like this. It would reach a horizontal asymptote. And you know something about horizontal asymptotes. An asymptote is a line in which your function gets very, 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 very close to without ever reaching. So what this means is really our, our charge will never really be fully charged. We'd have to wait an infinite amount of time for it to be fully charged because this is a horizontal asymptote. With that said, after a few seconds, it might be 99.9999999% charged. After a minute, it might be 99.9999 on a thousand places percent charged. So even though it would take an infinite amount of time to be completely charged, it could actually happen relatively quickly. And so, um, yeah, it's 113. I know we've gone over time. I'm going to pause right now because I want to give you an opportunity to ask questions. And I know some of you may need to go. Um, I do want to do a few more things with this, and I, I will post this for student hours and as lecture videos. But before I go on, and I'll probably only go on another 10 minutes, and then we'll call it, and I'll just finish up what I don't get done later. Any questions to this point? Okay, well, let's take a look at what we have here. So I just kind of quoted that after a very long time, the charge will reach a maximum value that's equal to the product of the EMF and the capacitance. We can actually prove that fairly quickly. We could say the limit as T goes to infinity of our charge. So this is the limit as T goes to infinity of our charge, which is the product of the EMF and the capacitance, minus one over RCT. Now notice as T goes to infinity, this term with the exponential goes to zero. And actually I, I won't skip that step. I'll just write another step. So this is the limit as T goes to infinity of one minus one over E to the infinity. And in this form, it's more clear that this second term goes to zero. So 
char after after a very long time, we're going to reach our maximum charge. And that maximum charge is just this. So the answer to the question in the PowerPoint, and remember, the question was, let's see if I can pull it up. How long does it take to charge the capacitor? Well, the answer is, it takes an infinite amount of time. But in practice, there's an important quantity that we like to look at with RC circuits. Here is that graph that I just showed you. Look at the horizontal axis. Notice that symbol tau that I have represented. And notice I have the time axis divided up into increments of tau. Tau, two tau, three tau, so on and so forth. Well, the first thing I wanna say is, is tau represents what we call the time constant. The time constant is just defined as that product that we saw in our solution. The product of resistance and capacitance we define as the time constant. And if you were to work the units of that out, the units of the product of resistance and capacitance is the second. So whenever you see a product of resistance and capacitance, it represents a time. So by convention, scientists and engineers around the world said, let's measure things in terms of this time constant since it naturally appears in our formulas. So let's talk about things in multiples of time constants. So in this picture, in this graph, you see that after one time constant, one multiple of RC, our charge reaches about 63% of its maximum charge. If we were to go to two time constants, that's going to be a higher percentage of the maximum charge. If we were to go to three time constants, it would be a higher percentage of the maximum charge. And where do they get that percentage? Well, that percentage just comes from putting in the time constant for time in this expression. We have an RC over RC. The RC over RC cancels. So we have a charge equal to one minus E to the minus one. This is equal to one minus one over E. And when you work out one minus one over E, that is about 0 0.63. So the time constant is a useful convention that we use to measure how much of our capacitor is charged. Now, as our capacitor is charging, you might remember from, from laboratory and from videos that the current in our circuit decreases. Well, that relationship looks just like this. So, so where this relationship comes from for current, and that was part B of our question. Part B was, what is the current in our circuit? Well, remember, let's see. Remember, current is defined as the time derivative of charge. So that means current is the time derivative of the product of our EMF and capacitance, one minus E to the minus T over RC. So when we evaluate the derivative of this, this is the derivative of two terms. And the derivative of this first term is zero because EC is a constant. And the derivative of the second term, well, um, oh, and I forgot my EC. There's an EC in front of the second term that I should put there. And the derivative of the second term just becomes an 
E C, and I say E, I really should be saying Kasai. I think I'm being a little lazy. Kasai C over R C, E to the minus T over R C. Notice the capacitances cancel out. And now we have an expression for the current in our circuit as a function of time. Notice that this current as a function of time is an exponential and it's a decreasing exponential. So as our charge goes up, our current goes down. And what that means is it, it, if we look at one time constant, remember after one time constant, our capacitor is 63% charged, but the current in the circuit is now at only about 37% of the maximum current. And I should indicate that the maximum current is this coefficient right here, the maximum current of your circuit. And that occurs when T is equal to zero. Because when T is equal to zero, that exponential E to the zero is one. We have the maximum current in our circuit and it quickly drops off. So if you go back to the intermittent wipers, in between wipes, the capacitor is charging getting enough charge such that when it's ready, maybe after two time constants, maybe after three co time constants, when it's ready, it sends the current through the circuit causing the wiper to wipe. But that current gets depleted very quickly and it has to be recharged. And by controlling the product of resistance and capacitance, you can control the timing of that circuit. Okay, there's going to be just one more thing I'm going to discuss, and then I'm going to sign off for now. And that one more thing is the voltage in this RC series circuit. So, so here is the graph of the voltage of our RC series circuit as it's charging. Notice this graph looks an awful lot like the graph for charge on the plates of a capacitor. And that's not coincidental. This graph comes from the fact that, remember, Valley College is quaint, right? So this means that voltage as a function of time is equal to charge is a function of time. So it's directly proportional to charge, where the proportionality constant is the reciprocal of the capacitance. So when we look at this expression then, we said that the charge is equal to psi times the capacitance times the quantity one minus e to the minus t over RC, well, notice that the capacitances cancel out. And we are left with voltage as a function of time is equal to the EMF of our power supply times 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. And, no, and, and this is the voltage across our capacitor. And again, since we're using Valley College as quaint, this is implying the magnitude of the potential difference across our capacitor. And I should have put a delta V here, and I should put a delta V there, and a delta V there. Okay, so what this means is this. At time t equals zero, because potential difference is directly proportional to the charge. If there's zero charge, you have zero potential difference. Because it's directly proportional, this graph should look exactly the same, except it might be stretched up or compressed down vertically. That compression comes from the value of the capacitance, the one over C. And what we get in the end is this expression where the EMF 
of the battery is the maximum potential difference across the capacitor. And that maximum potential difference across the capacitor will occur when we achieve our maximum charge. And we already know that the maximum charge occurs after an infinite amount of time. 